When I was a boy, just an itty bitty ball, and my papa used to make me shut corn. Now that I'm older, so much older, all I wanna do is watch porn. Porn, porn, porn. Chris. Oh, jeez. Well, sorry folks, I was just working on the solo record there, figured while I was in the studio, why not knock out a classic. Um, we're gonna answer some of your questions with the video update today. I know we haven't been doing a good job of that so far. Some people got mad at us. This next question comes from a gentleman who refers to himself as the one formerly known as the king. He's from Denver, Colorado. I don't know what happened to him that he is no longer referred to as the king, but I imagine it's traumatic. At least traumatic enough to make his MySpace name say he was a former king. But the one who was formerly known as the king asks a very popular question, and that is, what is the worst place that you guys have ever played? Here you go, king. I would have to say the worst place we've ever played was at a club called The Void in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, people were putting their feet through a crudely built stage. I believe there was an old fetus in one of the bathroom's toilets. I, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but something disgusting was in there. So it doesn't get much worse than that. Okay, former king, this one's for you. The strangest place we've ever played, or strangest situation we've ever had, would probably be in a place called Dos Amigos. The guy that was overseeing the entire show, the police officer, Joe Commander, he's legendary, look him up. He basically put us under guard dog watch. We had guard dogs around the perimeter of it. We weren't allowed to drink anywhere except for in this little closet of a dressing room that was 120 degrees. He also showed everyone his gun, which had his name inlaid in it in gold, just to prove a point. I would say is the Lime Spider and, uh, oh no, Spider Babies in Dallas. Oh. Hang on. Um, spider Babies in Dallas, we played in front of the bartender. Um, it was awful. It was awful. Spider Babies Dallas, congratulations. Awful. Next question comes from Indigo from the United Kingdom, and she asked a very serious question. Army of Freshmen, if you had the opportunity to sign to a major label, but you could still maintain all of your creative control and they would have no effect on your career, would you? We're going to send that one to our philosopher, Aaron, to answer for you, Indigo. Thanks for the question. I would say yes. Um, and the sad thing is, is the reason why is just the money. I mean, I think that we could do a lot more with the money. We could just make more music and tour more and we'd have so many more abilities, not necessarily money in my pocket, but, you know, money for the band to do things, to be out there more and, you know, do, do better videos. Just, you know, the vision that we really have for the music and the art, I guess, could really come across with more money. So, yeah, I would go for it. This next question comes from Freddie. Freddie from the United Kingdom asks a very popular question. He says, what are your favorite bands to tour with? And there's a ton of bands that we really enjoy touring with. We could go on for days and days, but let's ask Owen who he likes to tour with. I would have to say uh, my homies in Punchline, they're a blast. Uh, my homies in Quiet Tribe, definitely. Uh, we just get in all kinds of hijinks and uh, above and beyond uh, the Call of Duty, Bowling for Soup. I, I'm sure we're going to get the same top three from everybody in our project, so. All right, next up, we're going to ask uh, a question to everybody, and that is, what is your most embarrassing moment on stage? A lot of people ask this, and uh, this is what we got for you. I'd probably have to say it happened in a town called uh, St. George in Utah, and in the middle of playing, I was kind of, my drums were on like a riser that were basically three inches of wood, and my drum stool went right through the wood, probably because of my weight, and our tour manager, Bobby, had to hold me up the entire rest of the song while I finished it, and then we had to move the drums over because there was a massive hole where my drum throne used to be. We were in the Netherlands, and uh, at the end of our set, I usually throw my guitar to Bobby, you know, kind of look snazzy, but uh, I guess I just threw it a little too hard, and it went sailing over his head into one of the sound engineers chest and he didn't even see it coming and it was really embarrassing because well i could have put him in the hospital first of all but 
I had to like kind of go up and ask if he was okay and he really couldn't speak that much English but he was just nodding and he was out of breath and I just felt like an idiot. Huh, that's, I've had several. So I'd have to say uh, back in about aught one, 2001 or so on uh, Motocross Music Man this tour when I sprained my ankle during a sweet rendition of Spring Break and uh, did like kind of a hopping act for the rest of the, the song. That was pretty embarrassing. Now, Eddie from the southwest of England writes, Chris, is it true that you've really written over 500 songs? I don't know. Let's ask Chris. Yo, what's up? Young and fresh, steady, body rocking Eddie. It's your man, MCCJ, and I want to thank you very much for the kick-ass question that you sent my way. It's nice that you care about the music that I send out to the world. The music that I make it, you can take it, break it, but you can't fake it, son, if you know what I'm saying. What I want to say is the question that you ask me is, is it true that you've written over 500 songs? No, that's not true, motherfucker. <laughs> I actually wrote over 800 songs, yo. I write folk songs, I write kid songs, I write rap songs, I write rockin' songs, I write freshman songs. That was a lovely answer, Chris. Nice to know. Folks, thank you very much for checking out this video update. We will be back tomorrow with another one. Send those questions in. The most exciting thing is, is we have prizes that we're going to be giving away. So if we answered one of your questions today, my space us back. Let us know it's you. Send your home address, and you're going to get something special in the mail. Isn't that nice? All right, I'm going to go back to uh, writing my hit jam. See y'all soon. I was born in New Jersey On a Wednesday afternoon I did not get to eat chocolate Till I was the age of two Now I keep eating my chocolate Thanks, Lucy, for the question. There's a plane flying by, so cut. <laughs> hey, this is this is a question we're gonna send out to. This is a question we're gonna send out to. Uh, this question. The queue is silent, bro. You have to be looking at me. Oh, oh, brother. <laughs> All right. Ask me how many songs have I written, yo? And I want you to know something I've written. That's not what he asked. That's not the question. Yo, 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 what's up, Eddie, my man? It's MCCJ up in the house right now with my funky fresh rhymes and screwing you. Shit. <laughs> I write rap songs. I write rockin' songs. I write freshman songs. I write anal songs. I write tank wagon songs. <laughs>